welcome a gorgeous afternoon for qualifying from the Lady in Black, Arlington Raceway. We get ready for this field to be set. 46 cars are here. 43 will start tomorrow evening. Qualifying presented by DraftKings. 85 degrees is the temperature, a slight breeze today, a little bit of overcast skies, but right now the sun beating down on this racetrack as we get ready for throwback weekend from the track too tough to tame. Hello everyone, Rick Allen alongside Steve Letarte, and I say the words too tough to tame, this is a tough track, why? Well, first of all, this track is probably one of the toughest we run out of the circuit because it's so different from one end to the other. One and two is very fast, right up around the wall. Turns three, very, very tight, and you can get in trouble very quickly. We saw just yesterday Kevin Harvin exiting turn two, gets up in the fence. This is the guy that has had great success. Trevor Bain, big spin. The only thing that saves him is the wall that we talk so much about. He was going around. A lot of guys had issues. You see Dylan as well here off from turn two, and even Kyle Busch gets up. Heavy contact in the wall enough so that they have to bring out the backup car so we've got a backup car for kyle bush obviously the track is very tough let's throw something else at him how about the new rules package i mean sure what's slicker than darlington well let's take all the downforce off and send them here to darlington so nascar has decided to reduce the downforce how have they done that they've reduced the rear spoiler height from six to three and a half inches the front splitter is much shorter than it's been in the past and the front pan which you can't see it's underneath the front of the car but it makes a lot of downforce well, it's smaller, from 38 inches all the way down to 25. Okay, new rules package, a very tough racetrack. Throwback weekend, I would have to say that we've got to go back then to tire management. We absolutely have. NASCAR, with that low downforce package, NASCAR and Gidger bought our, our tire here that has a tremendous amount of grip when it's new, but it loses grip quickly. I think what we're going to see here is if you're a contender for the pole, how do you manage your tires from round one to round two to round three? Do you run 85 and 90 percent in round one trying to move forward? While that's a great story for the guys that are shooting for the pole, there's another story here this weekend with 46 cars entered. One of the biggest races of the year, Labor Day weekend, three are going to miss the race. You have Travis Quapple, Timmy Hill, and Chase Elliott all above the red line right now. That means they have to make it in on time. And when you look at practice speeds, you see Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney has had tremendous speed all weekend long. If you assume that they make it on time, it gets really stressful for the rest who their weekend might be over today. Right, absolutely. You've got 46 cars there, only 43 spots. Three will have to go home. That means that all three rounds, very important, not only for the drivers trying to make the race, but who will win the pole to win that coveted spot. Southern 500 has returned to Labor Day weekend. That tradition, longstanding here at Darlington Raceway, and the teams appreciate it. They've gone to the throwback paint schemes. Looking back on some of the heroes and idols of the drivers that took on Darlington Raceway. Drivers like David Pearson, Richard Petty, Buck Baker. That's in front of the NASCAR America set. And we have three rounds of qualifying just in front of us before the drivers climb into their cars. Let's hear from one of them. He's with Mike Massaro. And certainly one of the fan favorites, if not one of the favorites for the race, has to be Jeff Gordon, a guy who's won here seven times. The question is, with this racetrack the way it is, how do you manage your tires from the first round to the third round in qualifying? Yeah, you know, like everybody else, we're really enjoying this uh, throwback weekend here for the Southern 500. Bringing back a lot of great memories. It's hot and it's slick like it used to be. And, uh, you know, also this this uh, aerodynamic package is is making it really uh, exciting to drive it as a driver as well. So, you know, yeah, we're going to have to manage it. There's definitely some fall off from, from one lap to the, the next. Right now, biggest thing that on my mind for this 3M Chevrolet team is uh, I didn't make a qualifying run. And uh, a lot of the guys that did, like our teammates, did it when it cooled down quite a bit yesterday. So I think the conditions right now are the, are the trickiest thing is just the unknown. Uh, I think with this tire, if you go out there and, and you get yourself to the, to the next round, should have enough time to cool it down and still have some decent grip for the next round. Jeff Gordon does not have a throwback paint scheme, but his fans are certainly hoping they'll see some vintage Jeff Gordon here this weekend. And Mike, Eric Almarola is just below the chase grid cut line right now. So you need a big weekend. What do you need to do in qualifying? Uh, well, we need to qualify up front. That would be uh, really helpful. Uh, Darlington's a really tough racetrack, and it's uh, very narrow, and it can be tough to pass at times. But I really think with this low downforce package and the way the racetrack's aged and the tire that Goodyear's brought, um, you're going to see guys that run fast but can't keep up with that pace, and you're going to see guys that uh, have better long-run cars than... Uh, in practice, I thought our car 
kind of took care of the tires and was going to be good uh, on a long run. So we'll just have to wait and see till tomorrow night. But qualifying up front's uh, always important. Uh, pit road here is pretty narrow, pretty tight. Uh, so having a good pit selection will, will be important for tomorrow night. We've seen that you're number 43, and the whole team have embraced the throwback theme this weekend. How fun has that been, and how much can it work in your favor? Uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know, to have STP as a sponsor, and they've been sponsoring Richard Petty since 1972, so over 40 years of, uh, of, of relationship has been a lot of fun to to uh, to kind of reminisce about and to kind of honor uh, everything that uh, Richard Petty and this uh, this sponsor STP has been able to do together. So uh, to be able to have this opportunity to kind of throw it back to 1972 and um, kind of honor uh, everything that that our sport has kind of uh, went through over the last 40 years and uh, pay tribute to all the men and women that have come before us and uh, made our sport what it is today. Driving the famous 43 means even more this weekend. Mike, back to you. And Dave, from a Petty-inspired paint scheme to an Andretti-inspired paint scheme, that's the case for Joey Logano. Great-looking race car. How's it going to drive here in qualifying? Um, I don't know. We'll uh, have to wait and see. You know, it's, um, you know, these cars with this low downforce packages, they don't handle good, you know, and uh, so it's a handful for the drivers. It's a lot of fun for the drivers as well, and, uh, you know, it, where cars are going to run in three and four would be interesting as as you go through each round and tires kind of fall off and um, so I think there's a lot of unknowns going into this qualifying session really this whole weekend that we don't really know what we're getting ourselves into yet but uh, you know I'm looking forward to it. it should be a lot of fun our show Penzo Ford not only does it look really cool with the Mario Andretti scheme on it but it, it's pretty fast as well so I'm excited you talk a little bit about the tire fall off that said how much do you need to conserve here in the first two rounds um, you know, I don't think you can conserve much, if, if all, at all, any, really. You know, um, you think how close the field is and how fast everybody is. You really can't stand back much. You've got to be on the gas, I believe. Joey Logano looking for a strong qualifying effort a year ago, Rick. He started on the front row. And would like that same position for the start of the Southern 500 from here at Darlington Raceway. Round number one is coming up next. Cars on the track at Darlington. NASCAR Mobile is the best way to follow your favorite drivers, build your own leaderboards, listen to driver in-car audio, and watch live in-car cameras. All you have to do is go to nascar.com forward slash mobile. Three rounds of qualifying once again for the Sprint Cup Series now that we are at Darlington Raceway. Round one, the fastest 24 will advance to round two. You've got to be in the top 24 if you want to have a shot at the pole but you also there's a second race that's going on in round number one you've got to also have a good lap so that you can make the field there are 46 cars here only 43 will advance we'll get starting spots 25 through 43 out of this first round which is coming up and joining us back up in the booth Jeff Burton part-timer he came back, back up to the booth. Yeah, he was out playing in the NBCSN on-track car. Tune in tomorrow, pre-race show. Yeah. A special, a very, very special there, ride around the racetrack. There was uh, there was another car out there, There was Jeff. another car. And, and we don't normally see two cars on the track when you're out there. Very, uh, very fun to do and uh, an honor to do. So tune in, see what, it's, what I'm talking about. It's, Absolutely. It's really fun. About 20 seconds away from the green flag flying on round number one. Any predictions from what we saw yesterday in the four hours of practice? Who could end up on the pole for tomorrow night's race? Well, I think it's going to be hard to predict because this track doesn't look really anything like it did yesterday when these guys were practicing. There was a lot more rubber on the racetrack. We had some rain overnight. And other than a little bit of Xfinity qualifying, that's all we've had for track time today. And you heard Jeff Gordon allude to it. He said that... You know, without a doubt, there's going to be a difference between the speed, between the first time out and the second time out. He said he didn't think it would be that big of a difference. Time will tell, but I think somebody going out and going fast for one lap, that could be a completely different car that has to do it the third time right. out. So it's really going to be interesting to see who can run fast when. And we just saw the Xfinity qualifying conclude here on NBCSN. They started on the back stretch. During that session, Kyle Busch had an incident where he was not in the proper position on the track at least nascar deemed him to not be low enough on the racetrack similar situation here they've got to come up from the blend line to get out onto the racetrack so they're not in the way of the other cars as they're at speed yeah but it's much easier for the sprint cup guys because they're pitting on the front stretch you see casey kane here a little bit of a wiggle in the middle of one and two that 
That is one of the fast. It might not measure the fastest corner in NASCAR, but it looks like one of the fastest corners in NASCAR's or, or NASCAR around the top of one and two. And then you see, really, I'm surprised running the high line even through three and four on new tires. Yeah, I was surprised too. We saw a lot of cars in Q trim yesterday. They were trying to run right around the bottom of the racetrack. Although a lot of guys made Q trim runs late in the day when it was shaded. Sunny right now and hot, so we'll see how that compares. Well, it didn't affect the speed. The best lap run in all of practice yesterday was Greg Biffle at a 27.90. Casey Kane shatters that mark at a 27.45. Now, the track record, uh, quite a bit lower than that. It was set by Eric Almirola back in 2014 at 26.705. These laps, we would expect they would be the fastest laps that we're going to see in this qualifying session because tire management and tire fall-off has to come into play. You would think so. You know, the, the tire fall-off, you know, the teams have talked about it a lot. Uh, although in this situation where you go out, now you're going to cool your tires off. You know, he's going to cool his tires for a good 25 minutes, right. or even possibly 30 minutes. So there's a lot of time to cool the tires off. That'll make a significant difference versus going right back out on them while they're still hot. Are we talk about one and two. Well, here it is. Down to the apron, quick up to the wall. You hear how quickly Tony Stewart gets back into the gas? And stays in it. I was going to say, I was being quiet. I want to see if he barely got out of the gas. You see, it's a good run. He's ahead of Casey Kane. Now we're going to go three and four, a completely different end of the racetrack, Jeff. And now he's on the bottom of the racetrack. We saw Kane up by the wall. He, he chose the very bottom. Didn't go through the middle of the corner as good as Kane did. Let's see if he catches up on the straightaway. Doesn't look like he will. Not going to have enough, but how about Kurt Busch also on a qualifying run? Can he upset Casey Kane and go to the top of the charts in this first round? He does. 27.396 for Kurt Busch. An average of almost 180 miles an hour around this mile and a third. No, thank you. Unbelievable. If I get a choice, I like this is a good seat. Great seat. <laughs> like, there are some tracks we go to where I think, man, I wish I had the talent. Now, this isn't one of them. I'm glad I don't have to do this because this is, uh, man, this is hairy. These guys are rolling around a place that, I mean, that's way faster than 10 years ago when we used to come to Darwin, Texas. That, that is really fast. And, and to your point, I'm surprised they're quicker than they were yesterday. It, it's warm. It suns right. out. A lot of people. Not as a lot of guys made track. Q runs yesterday. The three and four was completely shaded. Normally that makes a lot of speed difference, but these guys have stepped up to the plate. And it's going to be interesting to see Kurt Busch. He's at the top of the chart at a 27.40. Well, you have Jimmy Johnson ninth at a 27.74. Remember, Austin Dillon right there just clocked in at 10th. Top 24. That's the goal. You don't doesn't matter if you're first or 24th. As long as you're in the top 24, you have the same opportunity when you get into round two and into round three. Without a doubt, going out the second time, if Johnson and Dillon get bumped out and they've got to go out a second time, that and to try to get themselves in, that will disadvantage them in the in the second round if they advance into the second round. It's about five degrees cooler today than it was yesterday, but we have to remember there was a storm that went through last night washing most of the rubber off of this racetrack so a very green racetrack can that be advantageous for these drivers a little bit more grip maybe at the beginning of the session I I've always believed I've heard people say that tracks are real slick right after a jet dryer goes in the racetrack I don't believe that's true I believe the fastest as soon as it rains the track gets dry that's the fastest the track will ever be and that just is one more example of you know we talk about great stars of course Jeff Gordon said in right before qualifying, didn't even make a qualifying run, didn't know what to expect. It amazes me how these guys are so talented. Jumps up to P2, first qualifying run of the weekend. Greg Biffle, very good yesterday in both practices. We'll see if he can back it up today in this qualifying session. He is 10th quickest on his first lap in this first round. We would expect you would not see more than one lap. The tires are going to fall off on that second lap. They're going to want to get back in, get them cooled off as quickly as possible, and, and maybe, if they need to, go out for another one-lap run still in this round. Well, I think that these tires the Sprint Cup guys are on are not the same as the Xfinity car. So while we did see a little bit faster third-round speed in the Xfinity qualifying earlier, we're not going to see that, in my opinion, in the Sprint Cup side. These tires are softer. They lose grip quicker. And I think that we're going to have less moving around. What I mean by that is after everybody makes a run and the top 24 is set, maybe 23rd or 24th, Fourth, Jeff could be in, in, in trouble of making it right. through. But if you're 18th or 19th, I have a lot of confidence that you're going to be okay to move through to the next round. Yeah, and Eric, Eric Amarola and the Richard Petty throwback paint scheme, he ran a good lap, put him in ninth. That's probably safe, don't you think? I would think ninth is safe. Yeah, I think he's solid, yeah. Yeah, he's real solid. 
you look at some of the drivers that haven't been out there yet. We've got Sam Hornis Jr. still to go. Clint Boyer, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. looked strong in practices yesterday. Kyle Busch hasn't been out. Matt Kenseth, another one. Joey Logano now on track. And I have two names on the top of my list. Logano almost went to the top of the list, by the way. He does, he does. But I look at Blaney in the 21 car and Chase Elliott in the 25 car. These are two young guys, great futures ahead of them, remarkable amount of talent, but they have to make it on time. And when we talk about a tough racetrack and how crazy one and two is right up against the wall, it's so easy, Jeff, to make a mistake. And a small mistake will send two cars that, while they're not guaranteed, guaranteed in when they load it up in the trailer they think man we're going to be in the show we're going to have speed but now they have to go do that ryan newman 11th quickest on his qualifying effort in this first round and i think Bernard jr hamlin johnson those three guys 18th 19th 20th they're really watching this board right now i mean they feel like they may have to make another run we have 29 cars that have already been out on track It moves quick. Again, we have 46 cars here that are attempting to qualify for the 43 positions. We will determine positions 25 through 43 after this round is complete. Chase Elliott now on track, on the clock. He sees in green. That's in relation to 24th. So the, the bar has been set. The cut line has set, been set. For Chase Elliott, that not only puts him in 18th, but gives him a decent chance of moving forward. That also guarantees him a spot in the race on Sunday. He has to be in the top 36. Is the whole goal for a guy. If you don't have points left, Blaney falls in 19th. So both the 25 and the 20, they can breathe a little easier. Both the top 36 on speed. Josh Wise now. And about called him Ricky Craven. But Josh Wise in that throwback paint scheme. The 32 on the clock. Oh, he had a big wiggle off turn four. And Josh Wise. We'll slide in at 29th. There's an impressive throwback paint scheme. Going back to the David Pearson era. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. behind the wheel. Wow, what a lap by Stenhouse up to P2. We had talked about how that was Roush Fenway cars have showed some speed, and Kyle Busch in the six. That instantly puts big names towards the cut line. You mentioned it earlier, Jeff. Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. sitting in 24th. All may have to go back out again. They have a little over 11 minutes to go in this first round. I think you're Earnhardt Jr. This team, you have to assume you're going to have to go again. you got Clint Boyer out there, a uh, really good car. So you have to, they've got to be preparing as if they're going to have to go again. Clint Boyer's not going to beat him, probably. We'll see what happens. Nope. And Boyer Boyer's doesn't make it into the top 24, 26th. And that's how cool. We're going to talk about three and four, really. All today in qualifying, this afternoon in the Xfinity race, tomorrow in the Cup race, three and four. If there's multiple ways to get through there. It's such a tight corner. It's hard to carry momentum. But how about DiBenedetto on a great run right here? Looks like he might end up in the top 24. Great run by Matt. 22nd quickest for Matt DiBenedetto. Dave? And will he stay there, Rick? That's the question that Greg Biffle's team is asking. Matt Pusha thinks they're going to have to run again. He's 17th right now. And that car that was so good in first practice, fastest yesterday, was so loose, Greg said, I wasn't sure if I was going to crash it or keep driving it. They're making some adjustments. And I know he's concerned in where he's at in 18th, but I think Greg Biffle's okay. I think while he's disappointed with that lap time, they need to consider it. Uh, a blessing that he got in there if the car was that loose on balance because I think he's going to be fine. David Reagan moves up in the eighth. I think at this point we can look at two names below the cut line. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin already been bumped out. Uh, Allgaier, Boyer, guys that you expect to see in. And then there's this whole race with a little under 10 minutes left. Who's not going to be in the field? And, and you have to believe that Boyer and his team felt like they were going to advance themselves in. If not, they wouldn't have waited that long to go. They waited way into the session to go, which gives them less time to get their tires cooled down to make another run. The one thing that Johnson, Earnhardt Jr., Hamlin, all those guys did, they went early. So now their tires have longer to cool down. So.
because the 15 didn't run as good as they thought they were going to run, it was probably a mistake to go a little bit early. And we've shifted our graphic on the left side of your screen because we're all going the assumption the top 20, top 21, feeling pretty good, pretty locked in. So now it's all about who's in. Who's in the top 24? You see the top three, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, they're in, but just barely. Then you have the cut line. People below the cut line are not advancing. The 30 the 62 and the 25 all have to be inside the top 36 to make this race. And the 25 is, so that makes the 26 the next guy. He's sitting 35th, so talk about stress. Right. Now, he's sitting 36th. So this race continues to move. So not only are you going to move forward, but if you're J.J. Yaley sitting 36th, who behind you can go out and bump you out? Can the 32 car or the 98 car, can they improve on their time and eliminate you from the field? Okay. On track once again, Dale Earnhardt Jr. got bumped out of the top 24. He's going to try to get back in. This is the second run, though, for him. Yeah, I'm interested to see if the tires have it in them, Jeff. I want to know if the tires can possibly go quicker a second time out. He ran a 27-78 his first run. He's tracking. You see here it's going into the red. He's headed down the wrong path here. It's going the hey, wrong direction. Be careful what you wish for, because when you go somewhere that has tire fall off, what that means is you're not going to get a couple shots in qualifying. You have to make the first one count, and the 88 didn't, and it's going to be very hard to improve. Austin Dillon also out there for a second attempt. Jeff, named Jeb Burton in the 23. Jeff Burton with a throwback scheme for his father, Ward Burton. There's Austin Dillon in the three. Got into the wall yesterday in practice. Stayed with their primary car. And he shuts it back down. Dillon won't break into the top 24. It's just going to be so hard. If you don't if you don't get it the first lap, it's, I just think it's going to be so hard to get it done the second lap trying to go back out again. Even cooling your tires, it's just... This racetrack and these tires, they just fall off so much, it's hard to make anything better happen your second run out. AJ Allmendinger in the 47 on track, and he is 34th quickest on his first attempt in this first round. It doesn't look like he's going to break into the top 24 in his second attempt. Tire fall off definitely coming into play in the strategy also of these three rounds of qualifying you, they, yeah, you can't make a mistake on your first attempt and I think Logano was correct I think while it sounds good that you want to leave a little something in the bank and maybe on the Xfinity side if you feel like you had a huge advantage you could but on the Sprint Cup side you have a 27 basically a 2740 is the fastest lap time a 2774 is the cut that's three tenths three and a half tenths over a 1.3 mile racetrack. I just don't think that's a big enough window, Jeff, that you can afford to not give everything you have when you go on the racetrack. I agree with you 100%. I, I know that I couldn't. I, I can't speak for these guys, but I didn't have enough talent to just say, I'm gonna leave a little bit on the table and still get in the top 24. I just, I don't know how you would know how hard to run. Right? I don't know how you would do that. I think one of the impressive things, it is about five degrees cooler than it was yesterday, but yesterday there was four hours of practice on this track, and the fastest lap that was turned yesterday, and, and some of these drivers did mock qualifying runs, was Greg Biffle at 27.909. We have 33 cars in this qualifying session that have all gone faster than what Greg Biffle ran yesterday. It's amazing what happens when something really counts. Yeah. When it's time to get a trophy, when it's time to sit on the pole, when it's time to get a, you know, to get an award for doing something, it's amazing what that garage does. They all find a way to step it up, and it's not unusual for teams to run better when it really counts versus what they did in practice. They just find a way. The drivers find a way to be better. The teams find a way to be better almost every time. And really, here's here's the one car who hasn't made a lap yet, the 62 Timmy Hill, needs to be in the top 36 on time to make the race. Once he establishes the time, we'll understand and what opportunity everyone else has. Because the 25 and the 21, we mentioned them earlier, well, they're in right now. So right. the 30 and the 62 are definitely in trouble. And then it's a question, is it the 62 or is it the 32? So, you know, the, the team who's the watching this the most right now, Jeff, is the 32 of Josh Wise. Because right now they're out of the race. But if the 62 doesn't run fast enough, that puts him in the race. And we hear the drivers. We hear Dale Earnhardt Jr. We hear Denny Hamlin. We hear those guys talk about the pressure of getting ready for the chase and the pressure of winning the championship. Let me tell you something. 
these teams that are lowest in owner's points, they deal with that amount of pressure more every right. single week. You just don't know how hard it is to be part of a, a team that has to struggle every week just to make the race. It, it, you can't sleep at night. It is unbelievably difficult. This is real pressure. Dave. And Rick, the 88 car sits on pit road, knowing in their pit stall, knowing that they're going to have to make another run, even though the conditions are not optimal. He's got three laps on the tires, two runs involved there. In fact, on the first run, his car was tight. It wouldn't turn in the corners, and he described the second run as all over the place. So not a good situation for Junior right now, and it won't get better with just a short cool-down time to try to make the top 24. Under four minutes to go. How about the strategy that Timmy Hill is playing? I mean, he hasn't been out on the track, hasn't turned a lap. He's still sitting on pit road. The, the seconds wind down. Does he want to play the game of, I'm not going to let somebody else have a chance of improving their times. I'm going to go out there, and if I make it, I make it. But somebody else doesn't have a shot to come back out and beat me. Well, I'm confident that it's going to take something very special to improve your lap time with the tire situation the way it is. So if Timmy Hill knows he has one shot, maybe it's a mental thing. Maybe he just wants to know what the goal is. Tell me I have what I have to run for a lap time. Maybe he thinks that's going to tell him how much harder to run it. Because you see, Denny Hamlin here is tracking in the green off of turn two, enter the backstretch. Oh, he's flirting with it right there on the edge. The 48 of Jimmy Johnson have got, has got to be watching that because they're next to get bumped out. Yeah, Denny Hamlin is 25th, and he was so close. He's back in the green. Can he be the only one to improve on his second lap or his second attempt? Denny Hamlin goes to 15th quickest and bumps Jimmy Johnson down. Mike. And that's got to be a big relief to Denny Hamlin because as he sat on pit road between runs, you could sense the frustration in his voice. He watched others go out there. He saw that nobody was really picking up on speed. He made some comments about that, but he was frustrated with his first run. The car was loose. He also didn't have enough brake, he didn't think. They made an air pressure adjustment in between those runs. They let the car cool down, and obviously he was able to pull, uh, pull off a much better lap there that time around, but a big relief for the 11 team. We're closing in on two minutes to go. Timmy Hill's still sitting on pit road. The only car. No, Timmy oh, Timmy's Hill is, out there. I'm sorry. I was yeah, looking at the other white car that had stopped where he was before. But Timmy Hill now on, on track. And actually tracking. He was tracking two tenths of a second off the 24th. He needs to break into the top 36 is what Timmy Hill's trying to shoot for. Yeah, this is going to make or break someone's basically whole weekend. Are they still going to be here? We'll see what Timmy Hill can run. He's outside the top 36, so that is going to not allow the 62 team to race on Sunday. Sixty-two, the thirty-two of Josh Wise. So we heard the relief. Of we heard the relief about Hamlin's team. Well, guess what? That put a lot of pressure on this team, right. 48. Now, all of a sudden, what was good for one team was bad for another. And now, what can the 48? Can the 48 answer the call? Look who's on the bubble the team we don't normally see in the top 24. Matt De Benedetto, impressive with the 83 team. Jimmy Johnson in the red. This is surprising. Here's a, here's a driver and a team that has been successful on this very racetrack and right now not able to break into the top 24. They have, but history can confuse you at times because Close. this sport changes. Does he make it? He does. He does. 24th for Jimmy Johnson. Under 45 seconds left in this qualifying. 72, that puts you 24th currently. Danica was out on a, on a lap, but I think she made some contact with the wall. We'll see here. Looks loose, bit really loose, up the racetrack and into the wall. Danica was trying to improve upon her 30th position in this qualifying round and not able to do it got into the wall as the last 20 seconds clicking yeah, off the clock the 88 went out tried to improve ran one and two at speed it didn't have the grip he didn't even finish his lap uh the nine's coming in and you see there's no one on the racetrack if we were somewhere that the tires had grip the, the track would be full right now but we're at darlington and you know what we're at old school darlington right. these tires they don't feel good every corner you put on them hurts them and i think that's good man i get excited when i talk about it because think about tomorrow night guys with new tires coming guys with old tires holding on it's going to be exciting a new tire compound brought here because of the lower down force and the race package that was brought 
little bit more down force might have kept that 10 off the wall Joey Logano he'll advance into round two Round one is complete. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series qualifying presented by DraftKings. Getting ready for round number two. Again, the top 24 advance. One that didn't advance was the 10 of Danica Patrick. Yesterday in practice, she had the 15th fastest time. I'm sure she was expecting to be in the top 24, at least have a shot at it. But obviously, running into the wall is going to slow you down. Yeah, it is. And, you know, she, she went out the second time trying to find some speed. And as we talked about, you know, it's very hard to do. And then... You know, came in after the run, and they were everybody's disappointed, and maybe not agreeing with how they got to where they were. And you know, I'm not going to pick on her here. I'm going to actually pat her on the back because this is what I want to see. I don't want to drive her happy with a underperforming qualifying performance. You know, she's disappointed. The crew chief's disappointed. Now, granted, they might want to go back to the trailer and discuss it, but when you see the emotion, that tells me that at least the drive and desire to improve is there, Absolutely. and that's what the most important thing is. That car has a lot of damage on yeah. it. I mean, that car, they could be going to a backup. The right front fender was really, really damaged on that car. Could be suspension damage. The team will have to look at it after qualifying is done. Round number two underway. This one, 10 minutes. The top 12 will advance into the final round and have a shot at the pull. Casey Kane, first one on track. I'm glad you said that. I was getting ready to say Jeff Bowman. <laughs> <I'm> telling you. <laughs> I don't let you have it. You get listen, I think we all deserve just one, you know, Jeff Bodine, the Bobby Allison. I mean, yeah. the, this paint scheme. David Pearson, Kale Yarborough. But this is what we saw out of the five car. He was early out in the first round. He obviously likes to be early on track. He had that same, I called it a wiggle yeah. in round one, but yet he still had good speed. So I'm not going to have an opinion whether it looked good or bad. I am surprised, though. Same as round one. He run right up against the wall in three and four. Yeah, worked early. May as well do it again. Right up against the wall coming out of four. What will the mark be that he posts? 27.751. A very good lap for this second round. It's definitely so that we ran the first lap, first time, though. He was off about, what, three tenths, three yep. and a half tenths from what he ran the first time? Carl Edwards, 2770. And I think we're going to see this mix up. I think just because you ran fast early or you ran slow early, that doesn't mean where you're going to end up. I think the second time on tires, everybody's car is going to be a little bit different, more so here than everywhere we go. Brad Kozlowski, Mark Trex Jr., Carl Edwards, Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, the fastest five. Mike. And Rick, just updating you on the situation with the 10 car and Danica Patrick. Daniel Canost has uh, apparently made the decision to go to a backup car. It's being unloaded from the transporter right now. They're rolling it off. If you had seen the right side of the primary car, you could see that it was more than just pancake. There was a lot of bent sheet metal and perhaps some broken suspension parts underneath as well. So uh, a, a tough, tough break for the 10 team as they will be forced to a backup car, it would seem. Unfortunate for that team. They'll have to go to work on preparing that for tomorrow's race as we continue with round two qualifying ryan newman seventh quickest on his run and on the left side of your screen you have the list of teams that have moved forward into the second round of qualifying as joy lagana goes to p2 and that list is in an order when you see one two three that, those cars have established times but the cars from kurt bush on down who do, do not have an order next to them they're yet to move forward with the time they're into round two but they haven't posted a time and there's also a little green light next to their number which lets you know they're on track it'll continue to populate as the cars finish their laps we'll put the cut line in now for that 12th position the top 12 advance into round three only in round three will you have a chance to win the poll no question but you have a lot of chances to lose it through <laughs> round one and round two we've Danica Patrick, we saw her get in the wall. I'm going to go with the bet that she's not going to be the only one by the time qualifying gets over. This place is very difficult. And I'll be surprised if we see many people try to make a second run. It's so short between the first time you run and then the next time you run. It's going to be so hard. We're certainly going to see some. And whether they're successful or not, I, I, it'd be hard for me to believe they'll be successful trying to go down the second time. Yeah, there's a difference between a good idea or desperation you might go out but it might not be a good idea and and and, and see blaney on a good run in the top 12. and and going back to danica what in, in the long run if you know you can if you're probably not going to pick up speed do you put your car in jeopardy right. with no more practice left right. i mean those are things that are difficult to say because your your racers your competitors you, you believe you can go out and do better but ultimately now they got to go to a backup car 
In retrospect, it wasn't the right thing to do, but of course, Hamlin went out the second time and got himself in the top 24. And there won't be a happy hour. There's no practice after this right. qualifying is done, so what they've got with these cars, they won't be able to try another lap to figure out if they can find any more speed as Matt Kenseth on the clock. Looking to break into the top 12. He loses some of that speed, though, out for four. He does get 212. 27.4749, which is two one thousandths of a second faster than what Casey Kane ran. And that's two one thousandths enough because with the tire fall off the way we're looking at it, I'm with Jeff. I don't feel that Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, Trevor Bain, I don't think there's tire enough for them to go out and try to improve. Six more cars to take time. This one's surprising me. Oh, big, big Into the wall by the hard 16 of Greg Biffle. Greg Biffle. And he was so quick yesterday in both practices, so promising, and now this. And that's part of that. That's part of that wreck. And the same with Danica. You think about it. Those guys had good days yesterday. They're going to try and out to execute again. They got to push a little bit harder for whatever reason. The cars aren't as good. You see how loose he is right there. But you ran so well yesterday, man. You got to go out and try to lay a lap down. The back. See end. how free he is. Yep. And much like Danica, that's not when we talk about a Darlington stripe. We talk about connecting with both right side tires. We're going to see David Reagan right here. Now that's a Darlington stripe. A little bit of kiss with the wall, both the front and the rear, even kind of a pancake. But with both the 10 and the 16, that's a hard hit, Jeff. I mean, even the 16 is going to have to make a decision when they look at that damage whether they can continue. And where, 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 where the 55 hit, I, that's kind of, I've always described it as there's a hole in the wall right there. The wall actually, if you look at the front straightaway wall, it actually veers out a little bit. It's almost like a little hole when you get up in that. And if you get in that, you're going to hit. And there's tire debris and stuff in there. He just got a little bit too high on quarter exit to turn four. Denny Hamlin in the red as far as the top 12. Picking up a little bit of speed. Gets into the green as he comes out of turn number four. All the way up to six quickest and for Denny Hamlin. You know what makes that even more impressive is that's run three for that's the 11 right. car because he made two runs in first practice. That tells me that now I know why the report of his frustration after the first run because he obviously has a very good race car. He had to be disappointed in, I'm assuming, himself or what the team did to the car because to pick up as much as he had the last two runs, he knew that his first run wasn't as good as it could have been. Yeah, and Denny Hamlin's on the pole for the Xfinity race, which is going to be run this afternoon here. Look at that paint scheme. David well, Pearson, the 17. That does take you back, doesn't hey, it? Hey, man, there's three minutes left. You made a great first run. Now, your teammate just crashed, yeah. but it should be fine. Go out there and get all you can. You know, that can't be the comforting speech you're getting you if you're the 17. And here comes Jimmy Johnson. Remember, he also had to run twice and barely squeaked in in the 24th position. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., another driver from yesterday who had great speed, was in the top 10 virtually for four hours of that practice session. And now has to go out and see if he can break into the top 12 in this qualifying run, as does Jimmy Johnson. It's so important for Jimmy to roll through three and four really well here. So when he takes the green flag, he's up to full speed. Every little bit matters. So you have to attack right from the start. Not after you get to the line, but before you get to the line, as soon as you approach turn three. Already in the red and going the wrong direction as he goes through one and two. He's coming back a little bit. Had a good exit off of two. His teammate, Jeff Gordon, in the top five. It's the only other Hendrick Chevrolet that is in the top 12. And Jimmy Johnson is 18th quickest on that lap. Yeah, Jimmy's definitely not going to be happy with the 18th. I know he's probably looking for more. We have Tony Stewart, though. He's going to kind of go out there and try to improve on his time. He's sitting in 16th. Minute 40 to go in this second round of qualifying for the Sprint Cup Series. Look how narrow that is. There's so much on the left, it looks like it makes this racetrack feel really big. The fact of the matter is, there's only maybe two lanes. Tony Stewart knew he couldn't do it. He shut it down. He knew there was no way. And, you know, when I look up and down Pitt Road, there's very little action. Right. I mean, there are teams, Matt, uh, Matt Kenseth, Casey Kane, they're out of their cars. The window nets are down. They're, they're, there's no reason to risk putting their car in jeopardy. They know in their heart they can't get better. So much like you said, Jeff, their risk versus reward isn't there for them. David Reagan's going to try again, though. 22nd quickest on his first lap. Over 28 seconds 
was his first lap. He's going to see if he can improve on lap number two or run number two in this second round. And he improves to 20th quick, but that doesn't advance him into round number three. And really, here's the question. We have Ricky Stenhouse on track. We have Carl Edwards in 12th, who's also getting ready to roll off pit road because if Ricky Stenhouse improves, he's going to have to beat Carl Edwards. And right here, he's tracking about even with Edwards down the backstretch. And this is his first run. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the last car to go in this second round. 20 seconds left on the clock. He drove in the corner so deep. You saw he went way up the racetrack, was able to get in the gas. P9, good run. Ninth quickest for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Again, as the seconds wind down, only the cars that are on a qualifying run right now will count. And I had all these guys relaxed, not worried about making another run. I thought they weren't going to put their car in danger. Kane doesn't do it. They all decided to make another run, but you see none of them seem to be going faster. Kenseth, not any faster. Kyle Larson on track. He will not advance into that top 20 or the top 12. So the top 12 is now set. As far as who will advance into round three. Saw Denny Hamlin when he went out, moved himself up into uh, sixth position. Watch what he did in turn three. He uses all the racetrack. He almost hits the wall, but right when you right when you get to the wall, you go back to the throttle get a good run off the corner. It looks like the drivers aren't in complete control, there, but Denny Hamlin knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly how far away from the wall he was. I mean, he was two inches from the wall with the right rear quarter panel, but you have to use all this racetrack. If you're not willing to go attack this racetrack, just like Denny Hamlin did, you're not going to have success. Dave. 16 car hit the wall as we know Matt Pusha the crew chief looked at the car He said I just don't know they need to get it back to the garage and make a final determination whether they'll fix this or go to the backup As I mentioned yesterday so quick was Greg Biffle and that 16 team into the wall in round two They're thinking about going to a backup Welcome back to Darlington Raceway on this throwback weekend as we get ready for the third round of qualifying presented by DraftKings. This historic racetrack brings back a lot of memories, and one of the bigger memories when you come to Darlington is Jim Hunter, uh, the man who was former president here from 1993 to 2001, uh, transitioned into uh, the corporate end of NASCAR and was uh, a VP of corporate communications for NASCAR for uh, quite some time. But we lost Jim Hunter uh, a few years back, but he is commemorated by the media center here, is, is named in his name. He, he's just a good man, taught a lot of people a lot of things about this sport, always had a perspective. He always t would take time. As a young driver, he, he immediately would come see you and talk to you and kind of help you see a bigger view of, of the world other than just what you were looking at from a standpoint of just your selfish driver had a huge role in this sport he's he's been missed worked in nascar for six decades uh, very very impressive man uh, was very respected by everyone that ever knew or dealt with jim hunter we're getting ready for round number three we will determine the top 12 starting positions as well as that coveted pull very coveted <laughs> <laughs> i know you've been waiting for at least a half an hour to be able to mention that. Well, listen, you know, we pick on it, we joke about it. While Pitt Road is pretty decent here, Pit Stall 1 at Darlington is great. It's a big advantage. And this place is narrow and it's tough. And we can talk about how slick it is and how narrow it is. You know the best place to avoid all that? The lead. Right. That guy has the best air on the nose, the cleanest racetrack. So why not start there? Brad Keslowski. He's the only guy I saw that goes went faster in round two than he went in round one. We'll see what he has here at the start of round three. Brad Bobby Allison Kozlowski. I like that's nice. That has a nice ring to it. The throwback paint scheme, the middle high life on the two. Will it be fast enough? Kevin Harvick also very strong. Practice yesterday, the first two rounds. Kozlowski goes 27, 4, 9, 2. That's a good lap. Very impressive lap for it's gonna be hard to beat. Brad Kozlowski. Very hard to beat. Well, he's really the only guy I think I've seen in the 40s yet here today. He's done it twice. Jeff Gordon goes to second in a 
75. That just shows how tough that lap of Keselowski's was. His teammate, Joey Logano, goes second quickest with a 27.733. Three tenths of a second, almost, faster than Joey Logano is Brad Keselowski in that lap. Consistency. Ran in the 40s every lap in qualifying. That's not only fast, but consistently fast, which is the type of car you're going to have to have here tomorrow night. It's one that can be consistent as tires fall off. Another guy that's shown decent speed has been the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse, uh, 27 of Paul Menard. Both have shown speed all week long, but what a lap Brad Kozlowski's put down. Stenhouse Jr., fifth quickest. 27 of Paul Menard, seventh quickest. Again, the tire fall off here at Darlington is difficult to keep up with. The only person that we've seen that's been able to do it has been Brad Kozlowski. As Kurt Busch goes to second quickest, 27.691. That was a good lap, but he's still two tenths off of what Kozlowski was able to run. Let's see what Harvick can do. It's just getting up to speed. Again, we talked about it's so important to be a carry speed through three and four, coming to get the green flag. Right now, you have to be in attack mode. You've got to be pushing hard. the clock right now Kevin Harvick so many seconds in this 2015 season two wins already he is locked into the chase does he have a chance at the pole though that's the question in the red as he goes into turn three back into the throttle early coming out of four still in the red though as he crosses the start finish line Third quickest for Kevin Harvick. Ryan Blaney, the Wood Brothers 21. Kyle Busch in the 18 out on track. Kyle Busch goes ninth quickest. I bet a Wood Brothers number 21 qualifying well at Darlington. That's something we've seen before in the past. Just a good run for Blaney. Think about young driver coming to, you know, coming to this racetrack, qualifying, making the last round. That's a really good effort for that team. It's really, really good. So we have our Xfinity pole sitter, Denny Hamlin. We tried to write him off in round one. He ran twice to advance in round two and solidly ran in third round three. Surely the tires don't have enough, but I, I, I don't know if I dare make a prediction. He's proved me wrong a couple times already today. This will be the last guy with a shot. He's... Everybody else has decided there's no way you're going to yeah. be able to make time. So you see the clock on the top, top right hand of the corner. Time's running out. He's the only one on the racetrack. 30 seconds to go. This lap will count for Denny Hamlin. You see flirting with that pull with, as he entered turn number one. Now down the back stretch, is he going to go the wrong direction? He is. He's a tenth of a second off. Just that much more impressive is what we saw out of Brad Keselowski as Denny Hamlin finishes his lap, and Hamlin will be sixth quickest. If you're going to sit on the pole, that's how you do it. You lead every round. You're the only car to run in the 40s, and you go ahead and clear second by two-tenths of a second. And to your point earlier, you ran in the 40s every single time you went on yeah. the racetrack. I mean, that, that's amazing. So they are in the pole. Uh, won it by two tenths, but I'm mostly impressed by how fast they were able to run every single time they went on the racetrack. No one else came close I'm, to that. I might be more impressed with the hat and the sunglasses. <laughs> He's doing them proud. I mean, listen, if you're going to put a favorite, famous paint scheme, Mike, you better back it up. Brad did it today. He did, and he's anxious to do this interview, as you might be able to tell. A lot of excitement down here in this camp. Uh, a very impressive qualifying effort. How were you able to keep up with the tire fall-off? So many other drivers were not able to. My Bobby Allison, uh, red show car, highlight. You know, this car here, this paint scheme, um, won both races when Bobby ran it here. Uh, I can't remember the year now. It slips my head. I got so in my head. But um, it's great to, to have the opportunity to drive a car like this and to be able to respect, uh, you know, our sports history at NASCAR and... Uh, and to be up front with it, you know, it, you know, running a retro car is cool, but you got to run up front with it. There's a lot of pressure to perform, and uh, and Bobby certainly did a great job in this car, and this one's for him. We're, we're really excited, but our team has been building momentum, building momentum, and it's coming at the right time, you know, with only two weeks to the chase starts, and, uh, boy, this feels good. Hey, give me a little scouting report of what you might expect on Sunday night. Uh, you know, I don't know. The, the cars are... Uh, uh, over the last probably five or six years that I've been a part of Cup, they've continuously gotten easier and easier to drive. 
this is a step backwards. You know, these cars are a lot harder to drive. I love that, and uh, I think it's great. I think it's exactly what the sport needs. It needs, it needs the cars to be hard to drive, and uh, I'm expecting it to be a handful Sunday, but that's what I signed up to do as a race car driver, and uh, hopefully we can live up to it. And Brad Keselowski doing Bobby Allison proud with a pole here in Darlington today. Dave? Kevin Harvick qualified third. Where was the four car lacking today, Kevin? Uh, we were, you know, fairly good in the first two rounds. Uh, felt like, you know, I could have pushed harder in those two rounds to go faster. And in the last round, we just kind of uh, missed the balance on our Budweiser Jimmy John Chevy. Just too loose. Didn't didn't quite uh, adjust it enough to uh, to keep the tightness in the car like you need to go fast. But we have a really really fast. Uh, car, so we're uh, looking forward to tomorrow night. I was going to say, third, not bad. You won from the pole here last year. How do you feel your chances are tomorrow night? I feel a lot better about it in race trim than I, than I did in qualifying trim. We just, you know, we try to concentrate on that the most just because there's so much fall off and the cars are going to slide around so much that I really feel like the cars need to be as manageable as, as you can make them throughout the night. It's really not about the first two or three laps. you gotta, you got to be able to stay in there and, and be able to maneuver your car and be comfortable and, and uh, keep it off the wall for, for at least 400 miles so that you can, you can be around at the end. So we'll, we'll try to take care of our car and make sure that we do everything right and, and get our car adjusted so that we're ready at the uh, last 100 miles of the race. All right, good luck tomorrow night. Mike? Martin Truex Jr., another one who qualified inside the, inside the top 10. He'll roll off seventh on Sunday night. Uh, a strong qualifying effort. How do you look at it? Well, it was decent. I think you, know, you always want more. You always want to be that guy uh, on the pole or on the front row, but definitely a decent effort by uh, all the guys in the furniture row Chevy and uh, you know definitely an interesting session here you know you're you're wearing out tires and you're slowing down and you're trying to figure out you know how you can go faster the next time around next time out so it's uh, it's a tricky qualifying session but proud of our guys we were able to pick up spots each round uh, which was good and uh, got a really good race car so was hoping for a top 10 start and uh, you know we can get them from there tomorrow night what do you think this low downforce package is going to be like here Sunday it's gonna be a lot of fun is what it's gonna be like it's uh it's fun to slide around and, and wear tires out again here you know this feels like uh you know six or seven years ago before they paved it is what it, the track feels like now so it's getting pretty rough over there off the turn two a lot of bumps a lot of character and uh it's just going to be a, a lot of fun to race here tomorrow night getting against the wall and uh, sliding around and stuff so should be a great race and uh, we're excited to have the teal colors on the car this weekend and uh hopefully we'll we'll have a great run for that lots of character that's something that darlington definitely has rick and Martin Truex Jr. referring to the teal colors. His girlfriend, Sherry Pollux, uh, was diagnosed with ovarian cancer uh, a little over a year ago. So they're bringing awareness to that with the teal colors. The front row for the Southern 500 has Brad Kozlowski and Kurt Busch. Two drivers that their best finish at this racetrack in this race is second. So one of them wanting to improve upon that. 32 years ago... It was the 22 and that same paint scheme. Bobby Allison winning the Southern 500 in 1983. Flash forward 32 years, and that same paint scheme is going to lead the field to the green and the Southern 500 tomorrow. More from Darlington coming up next. Throwback Weekend continues here on NBCSN. The drivers, the teams, the paint schemes all taking us back the 70s and early eras of NASCAR. 32. Driven by Ricky Craven. Won one of the closest finishes ever here at Darlington. And now Josh Wise behind the wheel of that number 32. The three of Austin Dillon already up on Jack stands in the garage area. Let's go to Dave. And Rick, when you're talking throwback schemes, you got to be careful with your eras because I think I've got Pearson and Pearson here, but we're talking 60s Pearson with the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse and 70s Pearson with the 21 of Ryan Blaney. I think I got that right. Ricky, let's talk to you first. Eighth, quick, and qualifying. How do you feel about your race car going into the 500 tomorrow night? Uh, I feel like it's going to, you know, we're going to have to make some adjustments after practice yesterday. Our car you'll be fusion was, uh, was good, but, um, you know, you got to be good on the longer run. We're going to wear out tires. Practice during the day, race at night. Um, you know, this is uh, another good qualifying round for us. Uh, that's two in a row for us. We just got to make sure we make the right adjustments. We over-adjusted at Bristol last weekend and got really, really loose. So uh, we're going to try to fine-tune it and, uh, and not make too big of an adjustment. But I've uh, been pretty happy with our car so far this weekend. Uh, maybe it's because David's riding with us and he's won here like ten times. So, um, you know, a top ten would be great for us. Uh, that would be like a win. So um, hopefully we can do that. 
But you need, like a win, to make the chase. And you're at Darlington. Can you take any chances getting there? Oh, we're going to take chances. I mean, I, you know, it's it's tough to see. I mean, we, we show up to win every week, but uh, our cars have been off a little bit, and, uh, you know, we're, we're slowly trying to get them back. So, um, you know, we'll take chances. I, I remember Regan Smith here uh, taking two tires and, and holding everybody off for a win uh, not too long ago. So I know the track's worn out a little bit, different tire, but, um, you know, uh, I think you'll see people taking chances as well. All right, Ryan Blaine, are you going to be taking chances tomorrow night in the 21 painted like Pearson 70 version? I think so. Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, we take chances and only running a, a part-time schedule. That's kind of the luxury of, of doing that. You can take chances and just go for wins. We don't have to worry about making the chase or anything. So uh, it's just great to have a, a sweet mosaic with Snap-on on the car. They, they let us do that with about 2,000 Wood Brothers pictures throughout the year. So if you can get a chance to look at it up close, it's really neat to see all the history. So we're excited. I'm really excited to run my first Southern 500, and hopefully it goes smoothly tomorrow night. Yeah, you sound like you have a very good understanding of history. So you know tomorrow night is big. You know being back on Labor Day is big. How excited are you? It's going to be great. I think it's amazing what Darlington Raceway has done, bringing all throwbacks. The cars look amazing. I, I think it's just great for the fans, too. They can uh, kind of have a, a little bit of, of memory coming back here and, and seeing all this stuff is really, really neat, and especially being with the Wood Brothers, too, and, and having all this history in there. They're all smiles over there, too, kind of seeing all the old cars also. But it's going to be fun tomorrow night, and I think the fans are going to see a great race. Yeah, Rick, I think it's safe to say everyone in the sport has gotten involved in this throwback weekend. Absolutely. The drivers, the paint schemes, the owners, the teams, actually even the broadcast is going to throw back a bit with Ned Jarrett, Dale Jarrett, Ken Squire. will all be joining the race broadcast tomorrow. As a matter of fact, just a few moments ago during the qualifying session, Ned and DJ were checking out how it was going up in the booth, taking it all in. It'll be a little bit different for Ned. Last time Ned called races, they didn't have computer scoring and all of the things that we have now that makes it a little bit different. We had the luxury of also having Ken Squire join us yesterday for a portion of our practice session that took place. Want to take a look at the full field for tomorrow's race. Front row, Brad Keselowski and Kurt Busch, one of the strongest cars here, Kevin Harvick in row two. Yeah, you see Jeff Gordon in uh, row three. That's a good run for him. They need a little bit of energy going into the chase if they, if they can make the chase. Of course, Ricky Stenhouse, good run for him. Yeah, you see here on the second page, Ryan Blaney. We just talked to him. He continues to impress even in a partial schedule. Eric Amarola, this picture doesn't have it, but with the awesome throwback mustache of Richard Petty. Back in row eight, Kyle Larson, a driver who has to win if he wants to make it into the playoffs. I believe in row 10, Jamie Murray's a little disappointed. Jimmy Johnson, a little disappointed. So, you know, those two guys wanted to better than today. And Ryan Newman, one of those guys trying to make the chase back in row 12. Still with just two races to go before the chase starts. A lot of drivers looking at these two races, especially Clint Boyer right on that cut line of 16th in the point stand. He has to be really careful. This is a track that can reach out and grab you. You know, a small problem here. Get a DNF, lose a lot of points. We go back a page here, get Sam Hornis Jr., Almondinger. J.J. Yaley with, it's going to sound silly, but an 18th, a great run to put that car in the top 36 and make the field. And back here are the final three rows. 43 drivers will be heading into tomorrow's Southern 500. A great midway here just outside the grandstands. And the crowd about to file in, getting ready for today's Xfinity race. Yeah, it's always a great race. It's, you know, it's a short race, 147 laps. Things happen quickly. Uh, as a driver, it was always one of my most favorite races of the year because you got to go and you got to go hard. You got to be aggressive. Yeah, Kyle Busch had some issues qualifying. He's going to be starting the back of the field. You add that onto a short race, you're not going to want to miss a lap because they're going to be excited right from the drop of the green. So the field is set. We get ready for the Southern 500. We have the Xfinity race later this afternoon. We do want to offer our condolences to team owner of the 13, Bob Germain. His wife, Gail, lost her battle with breast cancer earlier today. So our condolences going out to Bob Germain and his entire family.